What's up, Commodores fans? I'm Sean Oldred, joined today by Carter Bainbridge and by former Major League pitcher and Falmouth Commodore, Mike Trombley. 11 Lord. years in the big leagues, uh, three teams. You know, how are you today, Mr. Trombley? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. So, you know, when you came to the Cape, um, you know, back in your day, uh, how were you first contacted about the Cape League? How did you find out about the Commodores? Were you familiar about the team or the league before you had ended up pitching there? Well, I grew up in Massachusetts, so I was familiar with the Cape League going to Cape Cod during the summer. So I knew, um, I knew of the Cape League, and I knew actually a girlfriend of mine in high school used to, uh, they lived in uh, East uh, Northeast them, excuse me. And so they always hosted a player with, uh, to live with them during the summer. So I was familiar with some players They actually hosted a couple of guys from the university of Miami back in the day. So I was familiar with the league. I never thought I'd actually be playing in it someday. So when I went to Duke, um, I had some success early as a sophomore. So I got invited really early, um, because they knew I was from Massachusetts. They knew if I had a chance to play at the Cape, I would accept it. Um, so I really would just uh, contact my coach and said, hey, listen, I have a place to play in uh, Falmouth for you. And I said, great, I'm in. So beggars can't be choosers. I took the first that's I got. For sure. And definitely a good place to go, Falmouth and the Cape League, a place that year in and year out uh, produces a lot of kids who go on to play in the major leagues. You know, they come in from college programs where they're doing well. And you don't know it at the time, but a lot of the teams you're watching, quite a few future major leaguers, and there were quite a few the year you were there. I'm interested to know what memories you have of facing guys on the Cape who you then actually went on to face in the majors as well. Well, it was ignorance is bliss. So uh, uh, fortunately, when I was facing Frank Thomas in Orleans, I didn't realize he was going to be Frank Thomas or Jeff Bagwell or Chuck Knobloch or any of these guys, Timmy Salmon. So uh, my first thought is I didn't realize how good these guys were. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, but back when I played in college, there was no, right now you have to use a minus three drop bat. So these aluminum bats could be 29 ounces, 35 inches long with a barrel about that big. So you couldn't pitch inside in college. So when I got to the Cape and we use wooden bats, it was a whole different animal. So all of a sudden I could pitch inside and break a bat. So when I was facing, and again, I'm not downplaying Frank Thomas and those guys, but when I was pitching to hitters in the Cape, I found it easier, much easier than in college because I was facing the Clemsons and the Georgia Techs with, again, bats like this big and pop flies would go out of the park. So it was a nice fresh of uh, breath of fresh air to pitch in Falmouth, especially when the, when the fog rolled in a little bit. It was really good for pitchers. Um, so it was, like I said, ignorance was bliss. I never realized how good those guys were going to become. So if I knew what I knew then, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have enjoyed it so much because I don't want to pitch against Frank Thomas and Jeff Bagwell again. Sure thing. And, and maybe those broken bats at Falmouth helped raise your uh, draft stock a little bit if there were any scouts in attendance when they saw you buzzing guys in. But you just commented about how you, you had no idea that they would go, into, to go to the majors. And of course, I think it's a good thing to know when you're, when you're facing Frank Thomas or any of those other guys. But there was just a laundry list of major leaguers in the year you played. 40 of them went on to play in the majors. I mean, you just go down the list. Jeff Bagwell, Tim Salmon, Mo Vaughn was in that year. Yeah. JT Snow, Jeff Kent, Jeremy Burnitz. I mean, just a lot of really talented hitters in the 90s, early 2000s. Were there any of those guys who stuck out to you when you played there or you thought, man, he is really good. Maybe he has a chance to make it, but you were thinking, man, I'm glad I don't have to pitch against him in college at the very least. <laughs> Yeah, well, definitely not, you know, have to not pitch against me in college. But I looked at guys like uh, Frank Thomas. Actually, a good friend of mine was a starting first baseman for UMass. And he wasn't getting any playing time. And I asked him, I said, hey, how come you're not playing? He pointed to this guy who was Frank Thomas and said, oh, this guy's in front of me. Well, I didn't realize how good Frank Thomas was. But looking at him back in the Cape days, uh, yeah, he was special. And so was Knobloch. I think Knobloch won the, the batting title the last weekend of the year in 88. I think he had 3-6 or something like that. But I remember watching Knobloch, and he was a real, just a really polished baseball player and thinking he's, he's going to be in big leagues. Obviously, Mo Vaughn was going to be there. I always knew, you know, thinking about the draft, I knew these guys were going to be first rounders. So you knew they were going to be there sometime. I didn't realize how many. And, and again, guys like Jeremy Burnett, I didn't know who Jeremy Burnett was. I didn't know who Tim Salmon was, <laughs> but, but uh, they were pretty special. Looking back now, you can kind of see it. I don't know if I appreciate it as much as I should have. Uh, and again, as a pitcher, I don't want to see how good they were. Yeah, definitely. 
So, you know, you kind of talked about preparing for the major leagues. Do you feel like the grind of the Cape season, you know, playing six to seven days prepared you mentally and physically for the majors? Uh, yes. Not only was it day to day getting ready to play every day, but again, it was more of a feel of more professionalism. Again, not, I'm not discounting college. I went to Duke university, go Duke this weekend, by the way. And, uh, uh, it, it was it was really interesting because all of a sudden the wooden bats, the guys who were much more serious about the game, there was no guys who weren't taking the game seriously. They prepared for the game. BP was much more, in, I shouldn't say intense, but much more professional. You know, and when you made a mistake to hitters like that, you didn't get away with it too often. So I guess all of that added up. Yeah, you kind of look back and say, that really got me ready for, professional baseball and what to expect at the levels that, you know, you weren't going to get guys out by accident. Absolutely. Yeah, sure thing. And at the time you were pitching in Falmouth and go fuller field, which has recently undergone some pretty substantial renovations. I mean, they're giving the whole place a big facelift. If you're going to make it out to Falmouth this summer, we'd love to see you. But, uh, you yeah, know, how excited are you to see the new renovations either in person or maybe just photos, whether or not you can make it? Oh, no. Listen, I'll be at the Cape. I have a place in actually Mashpee that hopefully Sean and some guys will be out there to visit us sometime. And uh, so it's a great um, it's a great place to play. I didn't realize that Falmouth had such a following year round people and it's such tradition. Uh, and Falmouth. so I got lucky getting in Falmouth and, and love being the Commodore. And I'm happy to see the renovations being made. I was actually out there a couple times last summer. Great place. And like I said, it's, it's just a great place, all places at the Cape. But I'm a little biased when it comes to Fuller Field. Uh, it's pretty good. Of course. So, can't really blame you. Right. Not at all. Uh, so is there one specific, you know, favorite memory you have from your time on the Cape uh, during that summer? Uh, I would say... I can honestly say I appreciate it afterward because I remember my father asking me, what do you think about the level of play? And I kind of, and again, I, I'm not a very arrogant guy. I knew how crummy I was, so, but asking him, you know, he asked me how, what was the level of play? And I said, you know, dad, I can compete. I can compete with these guys. And I almost said it and looking back now going, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't Frank Thomas. Or I wasn't a knob lock. I wasn't that caliber, of, you know, uh, player but I, the best memory I have is that was the first time I kind of realized that I could compete with the best in the country and coming from Duke we had a we had a great program but we weren't very good when I was in college we kind of got beat up along the way um in, in in the ACC I mean we weren't at the top of the ACC like Georgia Tech and other teams were but it, it kind of showed me what was a great um it was a great stepping stone for my professional career that kind of like showed me that I could compete at that level so and I will say this, and I've said this many times, we had a bad boy, Arnie, that I know he's famous in, in, in Falmouth. He, he rode his bike. not named after him. Arnie Allen. Exactly. What is Ar Arnie Allen? So Arnie would ride his bike to all the away games. One day he rode his bike to Orleans from Falmouth. Now, anybody who's driven that in car, that's not an easy bike ride. And so anyway, he rode his bike all the way to Orleans. And one of the guys on the team gave him a ride back, but it was uh, – he had to start at noon that day to get there at six, I'm sure. So it was a just a lot of fun. We had a lot of great people from Falmouth and, and great, great fans. And you, they make you feel like a major leaguer. They really do. With the autographs and, and just supporting you, uh, it was a great experience. And I'm glad I was part of Falmouth's history. Absolutely. I can definitely say, you know, there's a lot of history in Falmouth. And I, I know from personal experience, I'm glad that you were a part of it. Um, yeah, you mentioned Duke. You got a prediction for this weekend? Is Duke taking on UNC? Are they able to, uh, you know, yeah, the national I championship see, you know, game? I, I was very shocked that Coach lost his last game at Cameron to UNC. I don't see them losing to UNC. What scares me a little bit is I think Kansas is going to slip by Villanova because of maybe their injury, Villanova's injury. So I'm seeing a Duke-Kansas final, and listen, it's Coach K's last year. It's too good of a story not to come true. The coach Absolutely. K wins a national championship. It's like Brady <laughs> winning the Super Bowl again. You say, no, nah, it's not going to happen. But what does it happen? It's like, hey, it's a great story. So Duke all the way, buddy. Absolutely. So thank you for your time today. You know, we definitely you it, appreciate it. So and we're, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you down in Falmouth again this summer. I will be out there, guys. I look forward to supporting the team. Good luck to you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Carter. See you.